I uh, would say um, having a better or effective communication with others. Okay, effective communication with others, so thereby improving interpersonal relationship. Okay. Anyone else want to say something, please? Just to reduce anxiety when speaking. Please repeat it, please. It said to reduce anxiety when speaking. Or to reduce anxiety. Got it. And, and I'd like to add one more. Sure. <laughs> so I was thinking about maybe telling, being able to tell a story. Tell a story. Yeah, I think. Great, yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So let me have fifteen other words to this. What's the point? In other words, to improve our skills. And to add to the credibility of ourselves. I can't hear you. Can others hear him? No, we can't. No, no we can't. So, we can't hear you. Oh, hello. I mean, so far so good. I have full volume on my computer. Is it okay or down? I think if you remain closer to your computer mic, we can hear you better. I'm yes. I'm standing like within like a, a feet away from my computer. Okay, we can hear you well. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> that's Thank good. you. So yeah, let me just put this away. Um, can you write on the flip chart, then we can't hear you. Oh, I got it. So probably the flip chart obstructs my, you know, sound waves or something. Anyway, thank you. Uh, so the list that we come up with are like the first get to the point, in other words, to improve the skills. And the second one we have is credibility um, to, to increase our credibility as a speaker. The third one we have is to inspire, to inspire the listeners or the, our audience and to increase confidence, and that's critical. You know, we really want to learn how to speak well, and that kind of boosts our confidence. Increase the flow of thoughts, yes. Uh, you know, especially with impromptu speaking, you have to think about that question, and then like connect your thoughts together and deliver a speech, fantastic point. And effective communication with others, yes. Once you know how to speak, what to speak, then obviously, uh, you know, the, the receiver will, will uh, decode the message better, then that leads to good relationship with others. To reduce anxiety, for many people, public speaking is dreadful. You know, they can't even imagine standing in front of a small group and delivering a speech. And finally, to tell a story, that's a great point. We all love stories. We have been habituated to listen to stories since our, you know, when, since the time we are babies. So, you know, we, we grew up with stories and definitely, you know, story is a powerful tool. I'm an occupational therapist by profession and I love to read case studies. They taught me a lot. It's nothing but a story. Case study is nothing but a story. So how the person got affected, what happened, what, what treatment we delivered and what were the outcomes. And it kind of like, it provides a chronology of the person's life cycle in that phase. And, that's a, that provides me a lot of worthy information, a lot of insights and learning. So yeah, to tell a story, we need to develop uh, better communication, better speaking skills. Let's quickly see what the experts say, why people want to speak. You know, experts, speaking experts, language experts have identified several uh, points as well. The first, yeah, we touched upon that when we say get to the point, like that is get, gain knowledge and skills, you know, how to deliver a marketing presentation, how to deliver a professional presentation, how to deliver an executive presentation, so many things. So for each is different and we got to just like learn uh, the skills to do that in an appropriate manner. And through this process, we gain so much of knowledge and meet a specific need, say, you are responsible to host a meeting or host a company-wide conference or something that's coming up soon. Then obviously you got to just improve your speaking skills, do some rehearsal, 
to do that job effectively. So that is a specific need. At BMD Club, we had members who came just for a couple of or two or three meetings as a guest to practice their toast speech for their son or daughter's marriage. So that is a specific need. And we, we invited the person to uh, join the club and we hope that the person will join in the future. But yes, people want to speak to meet a specific need like that. And gain material rewards. Sometimes improving a better speaking skills, improving speaking skills may lead to a job promotion, a, a better job offer, a hike in the salary, an increment, something of that sort. So to gain something really materialistic rewards, people want to learn to speak. And earn credit toward recognition. This may not be a reason for a Toastmaster to join Toastmasters, but once they in the loop, they learned about the CC, they want to, you know, they know the ACB, ACS, everything. So advanced communicator awards, competency awards, advanced leadership awards. Then they want to earn that credit towards recognition. So they, they want to get recognized. They want their um, Toastmasters credentials next to their name. So that's another big reason why people want to speak after entering Toastmasters. Gain pleasure. For some people, yes, you know, learning new skills is a pleasure. Learning music is a pleasure. Learning a speaking skill is a pleasure. So just they do it for pleasure. And it boosts self-esteem a lot. So as I mentioned, if you deliver a speech and receive a positive feedback, you feel worthy about yourself. So that kind of boosts your self-esteem. You feel worthy about yourself. You feel that the time's well spent. Uh, I can contribute to the society. So, so many positive thoughts occur to you when you really learn uh, how to speak and get a good feedback. We touched upon this point. Someone said increase self-confidence. There you go. You were spot on. Yes. Learning to speak builds one's self-confidence. Oftentimes, people have some good thoughts or good valid points to share, but they are so afraid or they, don't, they lack the confidence to put that out, in, out on the table. I've, I've went to meetings where people, like personally, when I speak to them, they share some wonderful insights and thoughts, but in the meeting, they just keep their mouth shut. The reason is they're so afraid they lack the confidence to say it properly or say it uh, in, a, in, a, in an expected manner. So yes, learning to speak, build self-confidence, and win acceptance and esteem from others. You know, the Toastmasters International Convention and all. So we are like, you know, gaining the acceptance from others as a renowned speaker and that kind of like boosts our esteem. So it, it, it pushes up in the ladder in the status. So these are all the reasons the experts identified. And we pretty much, you know, either one way or the other, we pretty much covered most of these bullets in our uh, list that we came up with. So now let's move on to learn how improvement occurs. So if you look at this flow chart, you see the first one as behavior and in the bottom you see speech. So speech is a behavior. I'm delivering a speech and I'm being evaluated. And when someone evaluates me and provides me the feedback, that feedback is the evaluation. Then what I do is I take that feedback incorporate those feedback and deliver another speech and get another evaluation. So this is a, like a good cycle. And through this cycle, you know, the speaker gets improved. So the improvement occurs through the cycle, behavior feedback cycle in, in behavioral psychology and in occupational therapy, we call this as ABC, like antecedent behavior and consequence. So we are, we are, we are talking about behavior and consequence. If I deliver a good speech, I get a good consequence, good feedback, and I incorporate that and deliver a better speech, I get even better appraisal from the evaluator. So I'm improving myself through that journey. But remember, improvement requires behavior change. Evaluation is just a source of information. Speaker is responsible for the change in the behavior, and only that will lead to improvement. So the onus is on the speaker. 
So then what's the role of the evaluator? Let's look at that. There are three roles uh, for an evaluator. Motivator, facilitator, and counselor. So let's talk about motivator. An evaluator must ignite the motivation in the speaker. The evaluator must create a climate for motivation. And definitely when providing an evaluation, the evaluator must touch upon the positive points or what the speaker did really well. Thereby, you know, we are recognizing the progress of the speaker, recognizing the improvement, and also instill the desire to become a better speaker uh, inside the speaker. So we are creating the desire to do even more. So we are reinforcing the desire. We are recognizing the improvement, the positive aspects of the speaker. And we are, thereby we are kind of igniting the motivation. So an evaluator is a motivator. Then the second role is facilitator. So what are we facilitating here? So we are facilitating the improvement by providing constructive and specific feedback. We are showing how to improve. We are telling you could have organized your speech this manner. You could have used your stage a little better. You could have used more purposeful hand gestures. You could have slowed down. You could have uh, learned to practice how to enunciate certain words. So we are really providing concrete specific feedback to facilitate improvement in the speaker, thereby we are assuming the role of a facilitator. Counselor, so rarely an evaluator assumes this role. If a person is dreadful about public speaking, then obviously we need to wear this counselor hat, as, I mean evaluators need to wear this counselor hat and make the speaker comfortable for speaking in front of a small audience. The, the goal should be to reduce the fear of speaking and reduce the fear. And to do this, the evalu an evaluator needs tact and sensitivity. We have to be really sensitive to the speaker's needs and the situation. In the occupational therapy industry, we call this as just a right challenge. So you have to determine where the speaker is now and then what could possibly a, a logical next step in the journey rather than say, providing with 10 tips to improve and you didn't really like, you know, say properly, your speech was really half a sort. So don't expect a novice, a fearful speaker to do a really good speech. So we have to be logical and realistic and we have to provide just the right challenge. What I mean by just the right challenge is if there is no challenge, then that kind of like, there's no motivation to improve. If it's too much of a challenge, then the speaker is like too afraid to venture further and then leaves the club or you know forgets about the speech so you need to just like provide some tiny feedback and give a little like a just the right challenge to go to the next step and once the speaker comes to that step then provide the just right challenge so thereby you're kind of like dragging the speaker into the improvement process and that's the role of the counselor it's time consuming uh, definitely you know, the evaluator needs to have some good personality traits to assume this role. But if, if there is a need to wear this hat, an evaluator must be willing and ready to do this. Wear the counselor hat and counsel the person, counsel the speaker, reduce the fear, um, reduce the fear of speaking and uh, kind of like pulling the person into the speaking journey. So how self-esteem helps us become better speaker. So Dr. Otto once wrote like change and growth takes place when a person risks himself and dares to experiment with his own life. So people with high self-esteem tend to take high, high goals, set high goals for themselves and seek challenges. On the contrary, people with low self-esteem uh, tend to take like low level goals. Uh, they feel threatened with feedback. So people with high self-esteem, they take upon the feedback. Come on, tell me where did I go wrong? Let me focus on and improve. But on the other hand, people with low self-esteem, they said like they are a little fearful. So they try less and they 
don't take that feedback in a very positive and constructive uh, manner. So that the bottom line is there is a link between self-esteem and personal growth. A person with increased self-esteem looks for growth opportunities and thereby grows better and faster. Then feedback reinforces personal growth. So in Toastmasters, we provide feedback. And that feedback is a constructive uh, comments and valid points there. So the speaker needs to use that feedback and go to the next step. So by providing feedback, an evaluator reinforces personal growth. And personal growth nourishes self-esteem. So if I'm growing and if I see I'm growing, if I believe I'm growing, then that makes me feel worthy, worthy to live in this earth you know, worthy to survive. I, I feel very meaningful about myself. So all these things kind of like, you know, collaboratively boost my self-esteem and self-confidence. And, you know, many Toastmasters go beyond in their Toastmaster journey uh, from their original goals. So in other words, they joined with certain goals in mind when they joined Toastmasters, but then they pushed the bar high, high, high as they knew through the journey. So I've seen uh, many people doing that. And more self-esteem generates more growth. That makes me believe if I'm worthy of this, then I can try even better, even better, even better. So I'm like, you know, at, at a personal level, I'm really growing a lot. So before we go on to the um, next um, slide, I'm going to pull my flip chart. And the question here, again, you may not be able to see better, ways to nourish self-esteem uh, among speakers. What are all the ways to nourish self-esteem among speakers? Anyone, please. More practice. I guess it is um, for self-esteem. You're just going to tell them things they did very, very well. Yeah. So that boosts self-esteem, telling someone how well they did. Got it. So recognize improvement. Am I right? Yes, sir. Got it. Anyone else? So the question is, how yeah. can we nourish speakers' self-esteem? Yeah, and I would add to that uh, that um, suggestion, uh, positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement, great point. Okay. I would add, Giving and giving specific steps to how to improve your speech because that gives them a way to improve and that is encouraging. Specific steps of how wow. to improve their speech. Fantastic, fantastic. Anyone else want to add to the list? All right, thank you so much. And yeah, we have touched upon, we have touched upon some great points again. So what we have on the flip chart is providing specific tips or steps. And that was identified by two people here and recognize improvement and positive reinforcement. All are great points for sure. So, Let's see what, again, the speaking experts suggested about how to nourish self-esteem when we evaluate. The first thing is be genuine. We have to be honest. We have to provide honest and sincere feedback. We got somebody say, oh, you did a great job. Everything went well. I love to hear your next speech. That doesn't really add anything and that may uh, make the speaker believe that, oh, he looks like he's not really attentive to my speech because he's not unable to highlight anything from my speech. 
So we have to be really genuine. We want to genuinely help others, right? So we have to be very genuine with our feedback, with our evaluation. And then recognize trends. You were, some of you, one of you were spot on. Yes, we have to recognize the improvement and we have to appreciate that. We need to highlight the strengths of the speaker. And that's really, really important. By doing that, we can nourish that self-esteem of the speaker. And the next thing is recognizing improvement. Yes, we talked about it. Create a climate for motivation. So make the speaker realize that there is more room for improvement, right? So you can still improve. So like try to show the way by providing specific feedback, which two, people, two of you have already uh, said here. So by being very specific, we are really showing them there is more room for improvement and we are showing the path for that improvement and we are motivating them. Avoid value judgments. Again, we are providing an evaluation, not criticism, right? And we are evaluating the person Sorry, we are evaluating the speech, not the person. So don't, we don't have to really comment on the person's appearance or the, you know, their decision to choose a topic or their religious belief, their political belief. Ignore the, ignore the ideas they shared. We are really looking to the mechanics, the way they shared, how effectively they shared that information rather than what they shared. So don't, assume a person based on his or her speech, but here our job is to how effectively a speaker can communicate his or her thoughts or points, whatever it may be, whatever they may be. So don't evaluate the person, just the speech and the mechanics of speech. Provide positive direction. One of you were spot on with the word positive reinforcement. Yes, you have to be really positive and show them the correct direction and I would add that we have to focus more on strengths. We have to capitalize on strengths. So highlight the strengths and briefly show the proper direction and the way to grow further. So you did fantastic on these, these, these areas. I would also suggest you to consider X, Y, and Z to make this speech even a better speech, even a greater excellent speech. So that's the way you know, we should evaluate in order to nourish the self-esteem of the speaker. So the next, how to build a, we are going to talk about how we can build a positive club climate for evaluation. I have the slide here with one bullet, but again, let me go back to my flip chart. And this is the last exercise we have in, in my portion of the uh, presentation. So again, I need your participation and help. Let me just kind of like see. I don't know if the lighting is not great, maybe at this time of the hour. How a club can improve its evaluation climate. In other words, what can we do to improve our club's evaluation climate? Could you Somebody? say it one more time, correct? Oh, okay. How a club can improve its evaluation climate. You say evaluation climate? Yeah, the club's okay. evaluation climate, yeah. I think we uh, can prove it by making sure each member uh, gets to evaluate someone because some of the members like afraid to evaluate other people because they feel that those speakers are more experienced, but I mm -hmm. try to tell them, don't look at that. You're gonna look at the whole picture. So uh, in, improving the climate by making sure all the members get to participate in evaluating, even though they're a beginner. Great point, okay. Anyone else to add to the list? Let's aim for at least four or five bullets. <laughs> hey, Karthik, it's Laurie. I would say that it's important to make sure you make time in each meeting to go through the evaluations because it's easy to 
try to squeeze in table topics and then you are running against the clock and we've had it's rare thank goodness where we've had to just send the evaluation by email and didn't give an oral evaluation so making sure you have time for it got it allocating time for evaluation in each and every meeting great point um, less criticism and uh, less criticism and judgment yes and more motivation and inspiration wonderful some more motivation and less criticism i think also by providing training such as the one that we're attending now yeah great point again that's true by providing a training on how to do a better evaluation fantastic anyone else want to add anything to the list having everybody in the club contribute we have uh, these little ballots that mm -hmm. individual members can send their feedback about their personal observations or, or evaluations we send it to the evaluator and then eventually it gets to the speaker oh you're talking about group evaluation sort of group evaluation well it, it's it's a collection of individual points uh, yeah. i got it yeah collection of individual evaluation points so one speech is evaluated by multiple evaluators right and our pathways have that same tool that you can ask another member to give you feedback even though they're not your evaluator you can ask the club how do you think i did you can send out messages to the club through your pathways through base camp wonderful i didn't know about that and you know that's a thanks for sharing that i think that's a that's a great feature in pathways then you know more feedback means more improvement um, yeah. yeah more benefit so obviously that's a wonderful feature and thanks for sharing that and you can give them a badge if you like to if you were the evaluator you can say like this was an inspirational speech you can give them an inspirational badge got it got it that's awesome wait so what we have here in the chart is providing an opportunity to each member in the club to do an evaluation allocating adequate time for evaluation in each meeting providing less criticism and more motivation and feedback training the club members to do good evaluation and more members can actually contribute the feedback to the speaker so uh, we can like think about a collection of individual feedback those were the points and uh, you know the final information that was added here is pathways has a feature where you can seek an additional input from other members who attended the meeting to base camp that's definitely an awesome feature so let's see the content here on the slide so how to build a positive club climate for evaluation number one emphasize quality evaluation so first as members maybe as senior advanced toastmasters we are responsible to show how to do an evaluation what is a quality evaluation so we need to model the quality evaluation for new members again as someone has highlighted this training is a great example of emphasizing quality evaluation that's why we are all here then help members become more acquainted in other words they need to know who the speaker is and what the speaker's needs and goals are do they know each other whether the speaker and evaluator know each other why the speaker decided to join toastmasters what do they expect what do they want to achieve so by becoming more acquainted with the speaker we can provide a positive club climate there so the speaker feels more involved in a non threatened atmosphere more supportive atmosphere so thereby there's a great good climate club climate for evaluation and assign evaluators when assigning speakers so speakers need some time 
you know, to review the objectives of the speech. Uh, they need time to review the manual, the, about read about the project. And one other point here is you have to assign evaluators based on speaker's experience as well. So you cannot assign, I mean, not cannot, I mean, it, it is better to assign an experienced evaluator for experienced speaker uh, like that. So that way there is a match between the evaluator and speaker. Then next thing is encouraging a dialogue between speakers and evaluators. Again, you know, it could be like um, having them interact prior to the meeting so that, you know, the evaluator may ask, hey, do you want me to look into specific aspects of your speech? Um, where do you think I should more focus on or in what area you need more feedback about? What do you really want to achieve uh, here? So we can, I mean, like basically more personalizing the evaluation to the speaker. So if you know more about the speaker, we, if you know more about the speaker's desire for learning, if we know more about speaker's goals, then we can provide a more personalized evaluation, thereby building a great positive club evaluation uh, climate. And evaluators need evaluation too. So in our meetings, we typically have this general evaluator role who provides uh, evaluate, evaluation for evaluators, right? So then encourage group evaluations. We do this in BMD when a club member gets elected or selected to attend or represent the club in the area level contest or beyond that level, what we typically do is we really want to groom that speaker because he's going to represent our club. So we are so proud about it. So what we typically do is we go in a round robin fashion and provide an event after his speech. So he will practice that speech in the club before he goes to the competition. So when he does that, we all provide feedback from different perspectives. So he collects all those feedback. So more feedback, more the speaker learns, more benefit to the speaker and the outcome would be fantastic. So if time permits, we could encourage group evaluation. I know, you know, with one hour of time with multiple members in the club, we may not be able to do this all the time, but whenever time permits, please encourage group evaluations. And as an alternative, we can advise the speaker to use pathways to reach out to other members who attended the meeting and you know, ask for feedback to gain more feedback about how he or she did with that speech. Emphasize manual speeches. I love Toastmasters manuals. They provide wonderful information that from at least from my perspective, I hardly find anywhere else. Wonderful information, very valuable tips inside the manual. And if we ask the speaker to use the manual to prepare the speech, use the information provided in the manual to uh, prepare the speech. Uh, that would be like a, you know, a better speech and better evaluation because the evaluator can also read the project's objectives, uh, project's description and provide a wonderful evaluation thereby facilitating a great uh, positive club climate. But now let's turn to the evaluation methods. There are three evaluation methods. Number one, tell and sell. And number two, tell and listen. And number three, problem solving. So tell and sell is the method that's commonly used in Toastmasters. Each of these methods has its own advantages and disadvantages. So let's first briefly talk about the tell and sell method. In the tell and sell method, the speaker speaks, the evaluator listens and provides a constructive feedback. It's less time consuming, but it assumes the evaluator to be an expert, right? On the other hand, the disadvantage of this method is it kind of puts the speaker on the defensive side, which may affect the improvement. Remember, the improvement must come from within the speaker. If the speaker is defensive, there'll be no improvement. So we do not want the speaker to get defensive, but this method may put 
a speaker in that end, like, you know, put the speaker on the defensive end because they are speaking, you're providing feedback and walking away. There's no way for them to defend or provide clarification. The next method is tell and listen. Here, the speaker speaks and the evaluator provides feedback. And the speaker is given, again, an opportunity to respond to the feedback. This reduces the defensiveness on the speaker's end, and it improves the interpersonal relationship and helps the evaluator to improve because the, now the evaluator got a feedback on his evaluation from the speaker. So thereby the evaluator also can improve. The disadvantage of this method is it's more time consuming and sometimes the speakers, the speaker may get more nervous and it may also kind of put down the impact of the recommendations. And the last method, which is rarely used, but a fantastic, wonderful, effective method of evaluation is problem solving. In this method, the evaluator works with the speaker and helps the speaker to evaluate himself or herself, to identify the strengths and weaknesses, to help them realize where they did well, where they went wrong. So this is more of an interaction-based evaluation. So the evaluator gets in touch with the speaker well before the speech, reviews the goals, review the project objectives, ask for where to improve, where to focus, et cetera, et cetera. Then the speech occurs. Then the uh, evaluator asks questions to facilitate the thinking of the speaker and like walks the speaker through the journey of identifying his own, his or her own mistakes, so to speak. And then also identify what else can be done or what can be done otherwise. What are the alternative strategies, options available? The big disadvantage is it's more time consuming. And, you know, practically we all like, you know, Toastmasters, we are here to improve our public speaking skills, but we all have only so much time to do this volunteering job or per personality development or professional development activity. So this is really more time consuming, but I have seen, you know, several Toastmasters in my uh, six years of Toastmasters life, they go beyond the level of the club level and they, they try to personally help that individual grow. Uh, for example, Nina helped me grow a lot beyond the club roles and assignments. She helped me throughout this journey and she's, she's continuing. She has helped me, I would say. She helped, she's helping, and she will help, I know. So thank you so much, Naina, at this juncture. I want to um, you know, give you a credit. Now let's move on to the next one, which is the 10 behaviors of an effective evaluator. And you know, I'm kind of really like nearing the closure. I know it's like 10 past eight or eight past eight. So uh, just bear with me for, for a few more minutes. And after I finish, we jump right into the prepared speech. So 10 behaviors of an effective evaluator. First, show that you care. Again, be honest and sincere. You know, here, do not show, as uh, an evaluator should not show his or her wit, wisdom, or impromptu speaking skills, because the, the, the focus should be on the speaker. So it is not to showcase the skills of an evaluator. So first thing. And second thing, switch your evaluation to the speaker. If the speaker is a novice speaker, new to Toastmasters, don't like delve in depth on so many aspects of the speech. Just pick one or two elements and try to emphasize and provide positive, specific, constructive, warm feedback that motivates the speaker to go to the immediate next step. Remember, just the right um, you know, motivation, just the right challenge, provide the, the challenge. For more experienced speaker though, you can be a little bit more, not harsh, not criticism, but a little bit more in-depth evaluation. You can actually really talk about uh, the mechanics and organization of the speech. You can, you can delve deeper when it comes to uh, an experienced speaker. Learn the speaker's objectives. Again, Try to contact the speaker in advance and try to learn the objectives of the speech and what the speaker is trying to achieve here with the speech. And thereby, you can provide a better evaluation and effective evaluation. Listen actively, be there, 
mentally and physically. Take notes, empathize with the speaker, use your eyes and ears, and summarize you know, everything when you provide the evaluation. And personalize your language. We are going to review that in a couple of slides, but when you start the evaluation, don't say you did this wrong or you could have done this, you, you, you don't, don't do that. Just like put it on yourself. I believe, or I felt like that. So I, I have a couple of slides to show you some examples, but personalize your language. So you are just, you're providing your perspective, your opinion, your point of view. It may be correct, it may not be, but it is your stuff. You know, the speaker could have been a better speaker than you believe, than you saw uh, that speaker performing in that given speech. So put it on yourself. In my view, in my opinion, I felt like, I believe, and then just add your comments rather than you could have done this. You deviated from there. You did this. You could have done that. So just take the view, put it on yourself. Give positive reinforcement. Somebody has already brought that up. Yes. B, positive, power of positive thinking. So like try to infuse that club uh, climate with positive energy by providing positive reinforcement and build a motivational climate. Yes, we need to really want the speaker to achieve and experience a success. So we have to motivate that speaker by providing a wonderful, useful, constructive, positive evaluation. We already covered this, evaluate behavior, not people. So we are only evaluating the speaker's behavior. We are not a judge. We are simply providing some feedback and assistance to help the people and do not evaluate the people. So I just really, like a couple of days ago, I attended a club virtual meeting and I saw, I evaluated a speaker. And for some reason, I felt that, you know, the speaker looked great that day, you know, personal appearance. Um, she, she did, she looked really great. I really want to just give my appreciation for that. So what I did was I provided my evaluation and then said, this concludes my evaluation and then say on a personal note, you look great today. So if you really want to appreciate a person at a personal level, complete your evaluation, do that separately. So we are not judging people here when we provide Toastmasters speech evaluation. And nourish self-esteem, as I said, highlight the positive aspects of the speech, highlight the, uh, where, the speakers, where the speaker did well, thereby he or she feels better about himself or herself, thereby it nourishes their self-esteem. And it, it brings more positive outcome. Positive self-esteem leads to positive outcome, positive learning. So it's a growth trajectory. And show the speaker how to improve. This is the best uh, point in this entire list in my perspective. This should have been at the top. So we have to be really specific. In, in occupational therapy, we call this a smart goals or smart objective. We have to be really specific, attainable, objective. So you have to be like that. You have to provide some speaker, show the speaker how to improve. Instead of saying you could have used your um, stage better or um, you know the space better, you could say you could have started on the left of the stage, provide the first segment of your speech, move a couple of steps, do the next segment, move a couple of steps, do the next segment. So this is really a little, little bit more specific rather than telling you could have used the space better. So try to be more specific uh, and objective. You know, try, you know, starting beginning with this way. How about you throw this, rephrase this statement as a question so you can pull the or engage the audience into the speech. So just try to be as specific as possible because those specific actionable feedback will go a long way, will take the speaker a long way. So let me review how to personalize um, your language. So as I said, instead of you saying, my reaction was, da, da, da. It appeared to me, it occurred to me. I felt that you could. So then instead of saying you should have, you failed to do this. Your opening was a you know, bummer. So don't, don't say that. Say it like this again, some more examples. I suggest, 
I think your next speech will have a stronger impact on me if you. A technique I have found helpful is, you know, even my boss, my supervisor did this. I know we deliver a lot of stakeholder presentations and he once said, you know, this strategy worked better for me. I tried to rehearse my speech in front of a mirror so that I can really observe my um, body language, uh, my expressions and everything. Uh, that it kind of like increased my confidence. But I've also heard one other Toastmaster friend saying that that's a bad strategy, don't do it. But again, it's, it's the individual thing. Practicing in front of a mirror may work for some people and not for others. Uh, not like this again, some more bad examples here. You should, you must, uh, good speakers do it by, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, before we, okay, let me complete this section and then invite the speaker. Not only the evaluator, the speaker has some responsibilities too. So what are all the speaker's responsibility that might lead to an effective evaluation? Number one, communicate your goals. Yes, you need to let the evaluator know the, what aspects that you're working on, where you want more feedback. And help the evaluator prepare. Try to communicate and send your project evaluation forms in advance so that the evaluator has a chance to review the project objectives and the project goals and everything. And prepare diligently. Don't just like, you know, I'm good at like giving an off the cuff speech and just go and do something like work hard, try to meet the speech objectives, try to meet the project's objectives. So spend your time preparing diligently. Empathize with the evaluator. The evaluator is trying to help the speaker improve his or her skills. So don't get defensive. Don't get into an argument with the evaluator. Empathize, try to see the uh, evaluator's perspective and point of view. Help the evaluator improve. So in the tell and listen method where we say there is an opportunity for the speaker to provide uh, responses to the evaluation, thereby we are providing feedback to the evaluators, thereby we're helping the evaluators improve. So yes, it is speaker's responsibility to help the evaluator improve. And also the speaker must prepare to change using the feedback received from the evaluator because evaluator is spending his or her energy, skills, everything for the sake of the speaker. The speaker must take that in and must have the willingness and should like take steps to change his or her speaking behavior, thereby, you know, it's a win-win solution. The speaker improved and the evaluator gets satisfied with his or her help. Um, so how to change your evaluation behavior? I think we can come back to this uh, section. I'm going to stop share. This will be the concluding section. So I'm going to ask Naina to introduce our prepared speaker, Jean Fritch. Naina, please take over. Yes, good evening, everybody. I will introduce our speaker, Jean Fritch. She's been a Toastmaster since 2005, and she's a member of three clubs, Raider Olney and BMD, and one other one. And she is working on completing her Distinguished Toastmaster Award before June 30th of this year also, and I think she's almost ready to complete it. She's going to give a storytelling project. It's actually from the legacy, the moral of the story, but she's going to be working on the pathways, understanding how storytelling. Her title tonight is A Little Encouragement, and the time for the speech is five to seven minutes. So Jeff, uh, you're going to be the evaluator. Do you have the purpose of uh, the storytell Understanding Storytelling Project? Uh, yes, thank you. The purpose of the project is for the member to practice using a story within a speech or giving a speech 
That is a story. Naina, I think you could continue your introduction. So let's all welcome Jean Fritch tonight. Would you like to hear a story? My daughter Carrie is an outward, was an outward bound instructor for 10 years. She's starting the year after she graduated from college until a few weeks before she married. For 10 summers, she took young people, middle school through high school, into the woods of North Carolina to teach them outdoor skills, to help them learn independence and self-resourcefulness. There were many challenges to her job. She met them and she loved the work she did. Sometime towards the end of her Outward Bound commitment, Carrie decided to go back to school full time, which meant as a newlywed, she had to divide her week between Virginia, where she lived with her husband, and Maryland, where she lived with us, so that she could commute back and forth to school. This back and forth arrangement continued for a few years until Carrie graduated and became a doctor of acupuncture. Today, she has her own clinic in Virginia. Even her wedding ban is a testament to Carrie's can-do spirit. There are 14 diamonds embedded in her wedding band. One for each year that she and her husband dated. She fell in love at 19. She and her husband are people of strong character, stronger opinion, and equal amounts of stubbornness. It took about 14, it took 14 years for them to round out the rough edges of their relationship before they were able to forge a everlasting bond, which they did. However, Carrie wasn't always a person of determined resolve. Take, for instance, the time that she was a junior in high school and had a major English project due. She had an excellent English teacher who had high expectations and high standards, which included accepting papers only when they were turned in on time. Carrie's English project was really a compilation of many English essays written over time and turned in all at once. Carrie struggled with the last essay the night before the project was due. She was working on it then when I went to bed. She was working on it when I got up in the morning. She was working on it when it was time to catch the bus. She finished it about the time that her English class was beginning. She was in her pajamas, I probably was too. We live about 20 minutes away from school. We pulled ourselves together and I drove her to school. I pulled the car up to the front of Sherwood High School. She opened the door and she stepped outside and stood there for about half a second and then plopped right back down in her seat, pulled her feet up and put them back in the car and said, I may as well go home. I said, what? She said, I may as well go home. There isn't enough time to get to the classroom and the teacher never accepts late papers. Well, I said, you never know, maybe she will. No, you don't understand, she said. There isn't enough time and the teacher never accepts late papers. 
well, you're here. You may as well turn it in. Even if she doesn't grade it, at least she knows you did the work. That must have been enough because she opened the car door and got out and trudged into the building and up to her build up to her classroom. The bell was ringing as she approached the classroom. The students were exiting in mass, but the teacher was still there. She accepted Carrie's project. Carrie even got a good grade on it. Sometimes the last stretch before achieving your goal is the hardest because of fatigue, doubt and fear creep in, confidence lags. Fellow Toastmasters, that's when a little encouragement goes a long way. Back to you. Great speech. Thank you, Jean. Let me call upon Jeff. Jeff, do you need a minute of time to organize your thoughts and pre prepare the evaluation? That would be helpful. Awesome. So meanwhile, I'm going to take you back to the slide and cover that final information so that Jeff can organize his thoughts and prepare the evaluation. And we'll come back again. Okay, back to the screen. We have covered a lot of ground here. So much of information that I've shared in the past, uh, like 80 minutes or so. And definitely with the help of this information, we are all going to change our evaluation behavior for the better. So in order to do that, first we need to do decide what we want to change. We may be good in attending club meetings, assuming the evaluator role, and provide a good positive and constructive feedback to the speaker and sincerely try to help the speakers. What can, how can we go beyond that? Maybe reaching out to the speaker a couple of days prior to the meeting, ask the speaker to uh, share his or her goals and needs and wants, maybe reach out to the speaker and then get the copy of the evaluation form or the project and information and review it. Or if you know that you're going to be the evaluator in that meeting and you, by looking at the agenda, you know the speaker's title and the project number, you can, you know, pretty much most of the manuals are available, uh, you know, on the internet. Uh, some club members have scanned and put it there. You might definitely bump into almost all project information online. So you could like spend a little bit of time to familiarize yourself with the project objectives and the project information. So the first thing is you need to decide what aspect of the evaluation or how you want to change. Decide what you want to change. Okay. Recognize the benefits of change. Uh, obviously, you know, when we change, it comes with some benefits. If we change for the better, then that is benefits. So we need to really believe that making that change is a, is a worthy behavior. And then the biggest thing is putting those changes into action. So oftentimes we self-evaluate, we know where we want to evaluate, where we want to grow. We know what we have to do that, but we don't do it. We think a lot, we speak a lot, but when it comes to action, many of us struggle. So the point is here, if you, okay, out of this, walking out of this workshop, you have at least one or two things in your mind saying that, oh, this is what, this is where I want to change. Try to write that down. Believe that making that change will help you as a person and will also help the person whom you're going to evaluate in the future and set a target like by next, like within the next six months, I'm going to put all these um, specific decisions I made into action uh, about you know, how to change my evaluation behavior and make it like a habit. So the first thing is, 
in the beginning, you might struggle a bit to do this, but once you reach out to that speaker a couple of times and get, getting the information at once and re reviewing it, and that will become a habit. So make it like a habit and never stop improving. Never stop improving. Never stop improving. As human beings, we have so much potential to improve in all manners, in your professional life, in your personal life, as a person, as a Toastmaster, as a speaker, as an evaluator, always try to improve. There is always room for improvement. That concludes this portion. Let's quickly go to Jeff, if he's ready with his evaluation. And after he delivers his evaluation, I would like to request two of you, two volunteers to briefly add to Jeff's evaluation and also highlight or evaluate that evaluator, so to speak. And given that, you know, we are already running past 831, the evaluator is going to keep provided two to three minutes, but those who are evaluating the evaluator try to make your comments brief within a minute. So let's hear from Jeff, followed by two general evaluators who evaluate the evaluator, and then I'll provide my closing remarks. Again, thank you so much for your patient listening and presence at this meeting. Jeff, please take over. Thank you, uh, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests, and especially Jean. Jean and I know each other very well. She and I have been uh, members of the same club for many years, and I've seen her grow and develop her skills over the years and gain confidence. And I think this was another step, Jean, in your uh, growth. Uh, you've been working on improving as a storyteller and I think you did an outstanding job today. Uh, I like the, uh, the way that you characterized the uh, stubbornness of, of your uh, daughter and now son-in-law and the gestures that you use to demonstrate uh, some, some of the aspects of the story, both in terms of the stubbornness and, and then the wonderful prop of the wedding ring. You, you must have practiced that many times to, to get that in this particular environment. So I think you did that very well. Congratulate you on that. I know that it's a challenge when you try to develop a story with as many aspects to it in a five to seven minute time frame. And I felt that you were really telling two stories. So you made it harder on yourself. You had the first story about your daughter and her fiance who became her husband. And that was one story. But then you also had the story about your daughter back in the time when she was doing an assignment in school and trying to uh, get it into the teacher. So each one of those could have been a story of their own. So, so I just observed that, uh, that was more of a challenge for yourself than maybe you needed to have. I like the way that you had covered the elements of a story, the character development, particularly of the daughter and, and your son-in-law. In the second story, not as much. I didn't hear much about the character of the teacher other than that the teacher normally would not have accepted a late assignment. And I think because of the timing of trying to do both parts of that, you had a problem of not fully resolving that conflict other than just saying, well, this paper was accepted, but it wasn't developed as much as your first story. So I think that's one of the difficulties when you try to put as much material into a presentation of only five to seven minutes. But I enjoyed the way that you developed your story, the way that you communicated the 
conflict and in particular the first part of the story where you had st stubborn uh, daughter and a stubborn son-in-law and I like the way that you used your voice as well as your gestures to to communicate I thought those were very effectively done so just work on maybe focusing on one of the stories and further develop the conflict and the resolution and perhaps a lesson learned for example in the in the school story that perfection in an imperfect world is sometimes an unrealistic goal or something along those lines i enjoyed them and uh, you've been developing your skills and and keep working on it because you keep getting better thank you so much jeff and Jean, before the general evaluators evaluate Jeff on his evaluation, would you like to provide any feedback about, from, about what he said to Jeff? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, I, I uh, appreciate uh, Jeff's perspective. I guess when I was writing it, I was thinking that I was trying to give an, uh, three examples of how Carrie was a person of can-do spirit. But, and I contrast it one time where she wasn't. So yes, I can see what Jeff is saying. I, I did, I was showing her as a can-do person and then one time as, as being challenged, but that was my, intention gotcha. was to show that she generally was but not always okay Wonderful. yeah thank you thank you thank you for for sharing that and naina would you like to to provide a brief evaluation or comments about jeff's evaluation i'm sorry karthik um <laughs> i had to go put dinner on okay i didn't know you wanted me to comment <laughs> on jeff's evaluation so any any other volunteer, please. I volunteered. Um, hi, Tony. Please hi. I I did love her story within a story. That is very unique when you write a story within a story. But I think what would have made your story more credible if you had a picture of your daughter, and or your daughter and your son-in-law. That's the only thing I saw. But a story within a story is very unique. And Jeff did have some great points. But the story within the story, I love a story within a story. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, for that feedback. Anyone else? Maybe one more. Yeah, Ramu. Yes. So I'll just evaluate the evaluator. I'm not going to yes. talk about Jane's speech because I enjoyed the speech. So... What Jeff did was um, he used a technique. And in, if you have been in Toastmasters for a long time, this is all what the distinguished Toastmasters do. They start out their evaluation with the warmth. So they try to make the speaker feel comfortable. And we saw that with Jeff's evaluation. He made Jean very comfortable. He, he related to her saying that you are a member of my club. And it's always a pleasure to hear your speeches. And then he talked about three things that he liked about Jean's speech. He said he liked the details of uh, her daughter's ring, her stubbornness and her husband's stubbornness. And then, the, uh, and, and then one more thing, I think it's the props. Uh, I think it's the ring and then, and the detailed uh, picture of her daughter's uh, of our daughter's journey, so of our daughter's character, maybe. So that's what he liked. And then he had two, I think he had two improvements. One is don't go off on a tangent, focus on one story, one moral, and then we get to know your daughter and your son-in-law much better. So that was his improvement. And then um, I think he did not pin the timer, so I did not know he went um, day long. I think he took over four minutes and 22 seconds, but after this, after you're giving an improvement, 
um, after you give the two implements, what you can do, Jeff, is say what you like about the speaker again, and then wrap the speech and say, um, just give a summary of the speech and then uh, all, it, uh, you can do all of those in three minutes and uh, that would have been very effective evaluation. So you start over very good, you related to the speaker on a much personal level, you talked about what you liked, you gave her two improvements, but then you can also make this evaluation much more effective by saying what you like. So you can rough out the, you can edge out the rough things that you said in the improvements. And because Zine is a very experienced Toastmaster, so you could go a little bit deeper. And then finally wrap up the whole evaluation. Uh, Great. In, in the sentence. So. Thank you. Thank you, Ramu. So basically, Ramu is emphasizing leave the speaker with a positive note and summarize your evaluation and leave the speaker with a positive note. And that's a, that's a great strategy uh, to do an evaluation. Thank you, Ramu, for bringing that up. So fellow Toastmasters, we have, we have come to the end of this workshop. I hope you found this workshop valuable and helpful. Let's all make a resolve to give an effective evaluation every time we evaluate uh, to help the speakers improve their speaking skills. Thanks much from the bottom of my heart for all of you to be here, to spend this wonderful Thursday evening with me. I hope you know I, I made this time worthy and productive and a special thanks to Jean for giving a speech, Jeff for evaluating, Ramu for providing this platform and acting as a timer and a general evaluator and Tony for taking up that general evaluator role again, and Nina, I cannot thank her enough. I keep thanking her since 2014 and I will continue to do so. Thank you so much, Nina, for everything you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Good night. Thanks, Jean, thank you very much. Thank you, bye. Bye. I'll be sending out the recording to anyone who likes. Sure, it. just send it to me, I will send my email as well. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Did you say the presentation was available? Yes, it's recorded. I'll be sending out to uh, just uh, get in touch with Naina or Karthik, but I'll be sending out to everyone in the email chain. But yeah, in, in case you don't receive it, just reach out to any of us. Yeah, reach out, Naina or myself. Yep. Uh, don't send it to me because my email has just disappeared. I, uh, it's crashed. Yeah. So I don't uh, have just, email. Okay, just ask me and I can. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, you bye. everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank Good you. Good session. Bye. Bye.